gonna get started. Um, can everybody hear me? Fine. Okay. Uh, so, is there anyone here who really doesn't want to be recorded more so than you already are by all the government? Okay. Cool. So, we're gonna try to record the lectures, and we'll probably put them on the website. Um, so welcome to Mass Lab 2020. Uh, I think there's just about 40 people, so either people are think at the email or are still sleeping. So we have about 20 people here. So this is lecture zero. We're good people, so we're going to index by zero. I hope we will too after I beat. Uh, you're going to have to bear with me because for some reason the clicker doesn't to be very responsive. But today we basically have two um, lectures planned. There's this introduction lecture, and then afterwards we'll take a two minute break, and um, Na, who is another one of the Mass Lab staff, will give a lecture about CAD, so SOLIDWORKS. So you can stick around for that probably at 11, although we'll probably won't use them all for this first lecture. Um, so in this lecture, if you made it to this Electric hall, you probably already know what Mass Lab is, but we're going to go over and do some quick logistics. Uh, and then we're going to have the game review. It's really exciting. And then afterwards, we'll talk a little bit about what your typical Mass Lab robot looks like. And then we'll give you the calendar and sort of the week by week schedule for what Mass Lab is going to look like for IAP. And then just some advice and resources. Okay, so what is MassLab? So MassLab is the Mobile Autonomous Systems Laboratory. Um, I guess first and foremost, it's a autonomous robot competition. And so my friend Aaron likes to say it's sort of just an excuse for people who like robots to have a little powwow during IAP. And that is definitely true. Um, there's also a lot of work, and so We'll talk about this. If you want to make a robot, it's going to take a lot of hours. But hopefully, uh, it's also fun. I think it's the, probably the hardest one you can have legally in the state of Massachusetts. And also, it's student run. So that's really important because um, it takes a lot of work to put on this class. And um, it's entirely run by students. So all of our uh, here's a list. Um, there may be more people. Uh, these are all students, except for the two people at the bottom, who are basically the shop guys for our shop that we use for Mass Lab. Um, and so, Mass Lab has been happening since before 2003. Uh, the first, I think, recording of it was 2003, which you can find on YouTube. And basically, we've accumulated so many keys here that some of the doors that these keys go to don't exist anymore. And this would have been an unspoken, uh, I guess, idea that basically the people who take MassLab will run it the next year. Um, as some of you might know, MassLab didn't happen last year because basically no one uh, wanted to run it. And so we'll talk about this again at the end of the semester, but if you really enjoyed the experience and you feel like you've learned a lot, I think it would be a really good thing to pay it for and help run the class next year. We can teach things that you find interesting. Okay, so where is MaxLab? So lectures are going to happen here, 34101. Uh, it's only going to be for the first week, and they're going to be at the same time, 10 to 12. Uh, lab is going to happen in 38500, which is on the fifth floor. It's the if you walk outside the store and you go into the elevators, uh, you take out the fifth floor and the shop and the lab are both there. And after uh, Nas lecture, we'll, we'll take people up there and then basically show you the space, have a tour with the shop guys. Okay. Okay, so uh, we're done. Uh, the shop. So we're sort of on uh, double secret probation because in the past MassLab has had some issues with using the shop space. And so just be a good person 
and treat this job with respect. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about like, so upstairs there's a shop area and then also just the lab space. You can't drill things in the lab space, you can only use power tools in the shop and stuff like that. But also when you leave, uh, I understand where it's like you want to clean up one plus epsilon because you clean up your own stuff and then if you clean up just a little bit extra that maybe it's a mess you didn't make, uh, then we'll have negative color in the shop space. That's how that works. And everything will be clean. All right, so what is the game? I'm sure you've been waiting to find out. Uh, so I think I'm going to introduce the game to, by telling you a joke in the form of a rhetorical question. Uh, what is the difference between a tube and a foolish judgment? So I'd like you think about that for a second. And someone just came in with the object. So one is a hollow cylinder, and the other is a silly hollander. Um, yeah, so our game object is going to be a cylinder. So we literally just made this, I think, like 10 minutes ago. Right? <laughs> It's going to be PVC. Um, we're going to talk about the details. The inner diameter is one inch. They're five inches long. And the outer diameter, the wall thickness is like a quarter inch. And they're going to be painted. So this is unpainted, but the actual field objects will be painted in the red. And so if you're unconvinced about cylinders as game pieces, you might be thinking, you know, axially symmetric. What's the big deal? I thought I would regale you with some, some of my recent findings in my research into cylinders. And this is real. This is from a website called fatfile.org. So we start with <laughs> cylinder fact number three. Um, because we're reporting, I can't tell you cylinder fact number one and two. A little bit too racy. But cylinder <laughs> fact number three. Uh, the sides of cylinder, look at the sides of cylinder carefully. They are not flat. That's true. <laughs> but the sides have curved shapes. Isn't that crazy? Cylinder fact number four, a cone. You can spot a circular base on a cone. Moreover, it has a vertex. If you think that it is a base, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really don't know who made this website, but I just appreciate that it exists. And the fact that the picture for cylinder a cylinder pick, but they're not actually cylinders there. Alright, so the game, this is kind of, okay, so here is our crew diagram of some cylinders. They're red green. Um, there are kind of two types of cylinders. The ones with the black marking on them are the field cylinders, and then the ones that have no marking come from these little oval things, which are dispensers. Um, so this is basically what one example map will look like. The actual competition might not look like this, but there'll be something similar. Um, and here is where you score things. So there are two colors. So depending on the color, you get different amount of points. And there are two ways to score. You can either put it onto these basic loop pegs. So they're hollow cylinders, you can slide them in. And if it stays on after your robot leaves, then that counts as the cylinder being scored. Or if you can't do that, or if you miss, uh, there's a box underneath it, mark that on tape. And if you get it into either of these, just basically overlapping, it counts as score. Um, so here's a point breakdown, it's pretty simple, we're not doing any weird multipliers like exponential for stacking and things anymore. Um, the full game manual will come out uh, tonight at 10 p.m. And so I really recommend you read it. And we're sort of open to suggestions if you think something's really kind of ludicrous or just you have a better idea, we could change rules up to 10 p.m. tomorrow and then after that, over roll changes and only clarification. All right, so what makes up a mass lab robot? So I don't know if, so some people came to that mental description and you already saw a kit bump, but basically structurally it's made out of this stuff called MDF. It's an acronym that stands for um, medium density fiber board. And it's basically wood that they compress and then they put a boxy in it and then it turns into basically a sheet. And so we use quarter inch stuff, and usually it's just laser cut. Um, for our actuators, we have gear motors, which are the thing, the thing in the corner here. 
And then also server mode, which is just the thing over here. We'll talk more about those in future lectures. And then obviously fields, because they're mobile robots. And this, this is a Bing bot, which is a really common type that we have for a lot of hot robots. So electronics, um, you have things like webcams, gyroscopes. This is a color sensor, infrared sensor. This is a limit switch. Uh, this is a motor control. So that's how you get your motors to actually move. And then new to this here is the LiDAR. Everybody gets a LiDAR. And in terms of software, the way it works is you have these guys, which are, they're called NOOCs. And they're basically single board computers. They're just like a really small computer. And you write all of your CD code using something called ROM, which we'll have a lecture about, which is the robot operating system. And then you talk to the actual hardware, like your motors and sensors, you think it's called a Kinsey, which is a button. And then there's this thing called TAM proxy, which is some magical piece of code that one of our previous alums wrote, which we will also talk about. There will be a lecture about that. And here are some robot examples. That's kind of what they look like. I think most of these ones are from a year where there were blocks. OK, so MassLab is in fact, very difficult sometimes. I think we tried to make the game this year so that um, at least uh, if you make a kit bot, you can score. And I'm just going to draw this because I think it's enough to do this. So if you draw a distribution of mass lab scores in the mass, basically it's really, really heavily skewed, right? Like that. And then sometimes you get like a bunch of stragglers here. <laughs> And then once in a while you get one team that really figures it out and they're like all the way over there. Um, hopefully it's going to be more Gaussian this year. Uh, yeah, and just to, I guess, make a point about, so from 2016, the shirts for Mass Lab, I don't know if you can read it, it just says it's harder than it looks. All right, yeah, so common pitfalls. Basically, things like you know, being really greedy about points. When you're designing something and you realize it's not going to work, but you have some sort of attachment to it and you keep going. Time allocation. Yeah, all of these things. I'll let you read this later. We're going to put a slide on the website. Um, we used to start this first lecture, and I think the subtext was Mass Lab secretly a project management class. And it's actually <laughs> true. So. And then the last one actually is pretty important. So remember to ask for help. Um, all of the staff people actually, if you're a staff person, you should raise your hand. Not everyone's here, but I guess. So there's Eric, Mohammed, uh, Addy up there on this phone. That's it. <laughs> but yeah, ask for help will be around lab. And we also have a piazza, so you can ask for help on there. All right, so what can you do about it? I guess put in more time. Always a good idea. Learn from past mistakes. Um, so I took these slides from like last year's presentation um, or two years ago. And I'm gonna guess what they mean is if you make a mistake on day one, don't do the same thing on day two. But maybe they also mean if someone made a mistake two years ago in Mass Lab and you saw that robot and you're like, that's a really bad robot, don't make the same robot. Uh, yeah, so you can learn from past mistakes. All of the MassLab websites have, well, okay, most of them have basically a competitor's wiki, where with, you guys will be doing the same, where you basically log, so like basically a blog kind of thing, and you log your progress on your robot. And reading some of the past ones, some of them are actually really hilarious, and there's a lot of really useful things that along those. Watch a lot of videos. Um, not just MassLab, there's lots of videos of robots. That's a really good, good way of coming up with inspiration for different types of designs. And at the end of the slides, there's going to be a bunch of links. So I would go through those. All right, so the overview for IAP, these are the key dates. Today is January 5th, and then for the January 5th, every day in the morning, we will have lectures. After that, there are no more lectures. You're just free to work. Um, on the 15th, there's going to be a design review. Uh, we're going to set up probably some kind of sign up thing for that. Uh, we'll probably have food. Um, that's sort of a milestone. I think in the past, we wanted people to be able to drive their kit bot in the square. 
Uh, I don't think we're going to make that mandatory this year, but that would be a good personal milestone to try to go for on the 15th. Um, the 29th is a mock competition. And then on the 30th, there's a sponsor dinner, although so MassLab normally has a lot of sponsors like Oracle and Boeing and stuff, but because we just started up again this year, we don't have many people. So if you want to have dinner with the Welcome family, which is our only sponsor, you can do that. <laughs> and then the competition is the last day of life. All right, yeah, so Lab Hours EDS uh, is an engineering design studio. It's upstairs, sometimes it's also called Cypress. It's generally open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, Dave and Anthony have the two sharp guys, you should definitely meet them. Uh, super nice and they know a lot of stuff. So if you have some problem or something you want to make and you don't know how to do it, you should definitely come to them. And you can only use the shop space when they're there. So basically, you only have nine to five. If you have access to a different shop, you're free to use that. That's your own discussion. And then 38500, which is the lab space adjacent to it, is open whenever mass up here is around and so generally it's going to be the same time from nine to five but sometimes also after time all right so here's the lecture schedule so we are right now at the intro after maybe 11 from whenever this finishes we'll have a cat session then we'll go upstairs and look at eds and what our space looks like tomorrow it's going to be a lot of mechanical stuff so prototyping it's going to be a rapid prototyping lecture that Addy's going to give, and then Nana's going to come back and give another mechanical lecture. And um, uh, this is important, so at least one person from your team who's planning on laser cutting should come to this so they can get trained at EDS if you want to use that laser cutter. And that's going to happen basically after the lecture then. And that's also where we're going to cut like tip, tip on stuff. Um, Wednesday is going to be electrical, and then uh, Linux, so all of the Linux brought you about to go across. And then some stuff about command line, Eric's going to get that lecture. Oh, the electrical lecture is going to be Juan and also maybe Noah. And in the evening or afternoon, Noah is also going to get give the electron version control or Git. So you can come to that if you'd like. And then Thursday, uh, Eric and Eddie are going to talk a little bit about the software stuff. So to Ross and Elida and Slam and that sort of thing. And then Friday, Noah is going to talk about computer vision in the morning. And then I will come back and give you a lecture on control and estimation and stuff. And that's it for lectures. Um, yeah, so I think for the first week, it's mostly going to be mechanical stuff. Uh, but at the same time, if you already know how to do some stuff and electrical stuff, that kind of just happens for the whole IP. Um, this is just sort of a suggestion. So week one, definitely plan on plan all that kind of stuff. Uh, and by week two, we really mean you should probably have basically a moving robot by then. Uh, if you don't, it's going to be, yeah, the, the, the probability of having a working robot if you don't have one by week two afterwards is OK. And then week three and then week four are basically lots of practice, just running your robot over and over again and making sure you've like, accounted for every inch case. All right, so some brief advice. Um, so I made a slide last night. I was trying to explain something. So I don't know if anybody's done FRC or anything like that, but usually what happens, right, is when you have that FRC, first robotics competition, is like this robotics competition where for high schoolers and just once a year, and then there's a game reveal day. And what my team the way to do is after game reveal, we would go and read the manual for like 12 hours and then just like poke as many holes into it as possible, which you should do today after you get the manual. And then what you do is you come up with as many ideas for robots as you can. Just like, and it's really important that it's on paper. So if you want to communicate things to your teammates, you have to draw. So just you know, draw mechanisms and ideas. And then the thing about, uh, so what, what I mean by this is anybody who's not battle bots is there's really only two types of battle bots. There's ramps and then tombstone knockoffs. So there's only really like so many types of robots that can grasp cylinders. So you should make a list of them and then think about in your head what kind of robot would play the game the best. And the way to do that is you think about if you are the robot, how many seconds does it take to do an action? And then using that, you basically figure out what the maximum possible score is. And then you try to get as close to that maximum possible theoretical score as possible. So like, 
uh, stuff like if it takes five seconds to pick up the, uh, the cylinder, there's only two minutes and 30 seconds of game, right? So if you want to pick up five cylinders, then that's 25 seconds of time. And then if you then budget in 30 seconds of driving, and then basically like that, you figure out what the maximum possible score is, and then you figure out what kind of robots can do that. Um, the thing about failing fast and not being married to the design is basically, once you have an idea, you should be able to try it. So uh, when I did Mass Lab in 2016, um, they also didn't have any game pieces. But the first thing we did after the first lecture is we went and made our own game piece. So this is a contraband game piece. This is actually the first game piece we made. So we just went and drilled it out, and then we took hot glue and pieces of wood, and we just tried a bunch of things. And so the robot we made had these little arms things, and it would scoop up the, the cube and it <coughs> into a bucket. And so that design was basically already there on day one. Even though we didn't decide that was the final design until like day three, but it was already there on day one just from popping things together and then just physically moving with our hands. So if you can, I would recommend going and finding some cylindrical object and just playing with it and figuring out what you can do with it. Uh, and so the reason why this drill here is that the whole cordless drill is a really good stand-in for a motor. So if you know the specs for this and you're like, I want to make something that moves, you just stick it into the chuck and you just turn on the drill. That's a really good substitute without having to build the rest of the robot. Another thing that's really useful is these RC uh, transmitters, which I think we'll try to find some, but this is really great for rapid prototyping, and I think Daddy will talk more about this, but you can just stick in a servo and then just control it with a joystick. Because even though Mass Lab is autonomous, but if you're trying to figure out a mechanism, it doesn't need to be autonomous when you're doing it doing it for the first one. And, okay, so we're almost done. I just want to tell you a story. So does anybody remember 2002? Okay, I don't remember it because I was like seven when this happened. But there was a FRC robot called Beanie the Beast. And so this robot was a fucking legend because it would literally in the first 10, so the like, game was like two minutes or something like that, but the first like 10 seconds of autonomous, it had these three arms that would just go out and just grab everything single one of these like big gold things, which are the scoring monster. And so the common line from Chief Delphi, which is the forms for FRC, is literally you couldn't win once they grabbed the things. So that's the kind of thing I think you should be thinking about. Have you made a really good robot that just, you just want to decimate your phone? <laughs> There's a video if you want to watch it. All right, so some resources, past maps, maps up videos, videos, Chief Delphi. Uh, this guy's really good. He's like some like, really old Vietnamese guy who has like literally hundreds and hundreds of videos and mechanisms on YouTube. There's like no audio. He just shows you the mechanism and then it's in like cats. It's ridiculous. And then you can watch reveal videos too if you're feeling really you know, unmotivated. Alright, so remember to ask questions. And so. Yeah, that's it for me. I'm just going to leave you with, so at the end of our competition, my team in 2016 had some parting advice for me. So Kevin said, except that some things might be software problems, and Eric said, it's a little harder anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then Jaren said, something else. I'm still thinking about this one. I haven't figured it out. So. All right. So that's it. Good luck. I'll see you on Friday for the last lecture. Um, we're going to do a 10 minute break, but maybe we'll start early at um, 9.40 with the cat and stuff and recording that. And then after that, I guess at 12 or whenever that ends, we'll go to